Hi everyone. So we are at a stage of the game in DFFOO Global where there's quite a number of LD characters and LD call abilities that have been released. And of course this adds a very nice dimension or I should say an additional layer to your team building where with the right combination of LD characters in each specific Lufania fight, uh, you can, it can actually make a very big difference. Of course to date, LD calls and even some regular calls have been used for different purposes. So for example, you have the very popular Jack LD call, which lends a very strong debuff in the form of reducing defense and increasing wave damage taken. Or in some Lufania fights, people use LD calls to handle the Lufania orb, uh, depending on the orb requirements. Or of course, you can also opt for pure damage calls, such as Squall, uh, who does significant damage, or of course recently with Terra as well, who deals a lot of damage with their call abilities uh, without taking additional turns and also at instant speed. So of course there are various dimensions in calls and inside the game you can explore what each call ability does by going to the description and reading through what it does. However, what the game doesn't tell you is that call abilities also include effects when the character joins the battle. So if you notice when you've realized characters and you max them out at 3-3 realization, many characters actually start the battle with certain buffs or debuffs present and this gets carried uh, through into call abilities as well so for example if i take hope as an example here hope starts the fight with shell and protect buff cast on the party right at the start of the battle which also means that if you include hope as a call character the moment you bring hope uh, in through call, regardless of whether it's his LD call or his regular call, he will buff the entire party with shell and protect as well because it's an effect when he comes into battle. Same thing with debuffs as well. I think one common example is Sarah with her recently uh, reworked LD in global. Sarah always starts the fight with a couple of debuffs landed on the enemy which includes her EX debuff as well as a poison debuff. And this will get carried forward in her call ability as well, meaning the moment you bring Sarah into battle in a call, uh, she will land debuffs on the enemies. So I, I thought I'd make a short video covering five not very well known or not very obvious call users or utilities. Alright, so the first not very obvious utility in a call ability that I want to feature will be Kraal's call. Now Kraal's effect can seem very obvious uh, just from a first glance. So just a quick overview, her regular call provides battery to the entire party and a very nice 60% bonus damage up on elemental weakness. But I think the real price comes in her LD call. Now her LD call uh, seems pretty obvious at the first glance because it just does her regular LD attack which would normally land a trap debuff on the entire enemy party. But what is interesting is the call effect. So if you notice on my Seador, I now have 6 turns of call effect in play. And again, this may seem very obvious uh, and many of people have used this already but um, the 6 turns call effect grants the entire party with lightning and chant or thunder and chant. And this is actually can be potentially um, abused to the maximum. For one thing, it comes in the effect of an aura and not a buff. Now how is that different? First of all, as an aura, it cannot be dispelled by any means other than the character actually dying and also of course it cannot be pushed off or replaced by other buffs as well. Now why I include this in my list of not very obvious call abilities is that we now are in the stage of a game in global where we have uh, characters who are very slow 
and characters who are very fast and uh, to the point where they are actually turn hoggers. So if you actually make a party composition comprising of one medium to slow speed character um, and give them or, or give him or her crawl call ability and you pair this character up with fast characters such as Lightning or Terra who will take multiple turns in a row you will get an effect where for each one turn this slow character takes your Lightning and Terra will take multiple turns so what this means is that you actually have many many turns where you can abuse this Thunder Enchant so this can be useful in a few Lufania stages for example in boss rush number 2 the first wave requires you to use thunder elemental attacks for the Lufania orb and many people actually satisfy this just by bringing a crowd into the main party or using a few different uh, thunder elemental characters but what you can also consider is to use crowd as a call and set crowd on a slow unit um, and that way you can actually get by the entire first wave um, just using a crowd call as well which really opens up uh, the flexibility in terms of party composition another good example would be in the recent Abyss Lufania which is very infamous because they've disabled the Yuffie Cheese strategy uh, and if you've seen one of my recent videos I actually did a Noctis, Terra and Mog clear uh, and it was a 6 turn clear mainly also using a Crowl call so what I did was set Crowl call on Mog have mock call crawl and have the six turns effect and it actually lasted the entire battle because Terra and Noctis were taking so many turns uh, to one of Mock's turn and I think it's really testament to how powerful the crawl call ability can be uh, when used in the right party composition I will also be putting a link in the video description of that battle featuring the utility behind crowd call so if you want to have a better idea of uh, how it works uh, in action do check that video out okay the second not so obvious call feature that i want to list in this video would be buff extensions and there's currently two key characters who can provide these as call abilities uh, which is uh, Hope and Sars. Either one will work uh, and for the purposes of this video I feature Hope mainly because uh, Hope has the LD call ability uh, available whereas Sars only has regular call and this means that if you use Hope as a call ability you can do buff extension twice in the fight one for each call ability. So to showcase this uh, I brought Gradio and if you look at the buff list on Gradio he has blink up and is currently at uh, 3 turns so if I use any of his call ab abilities here so for example if I use uh, purification which normally many people would bring just for the D shell debuff but hope actually does a bit more than that so here you can see that by bringing hope in I've actually granted gradio shell and protect but interestingly beyond that if you look at his blink who was previously at 3 turns it's now been extended to 4 turns and because I have one more call ability left I can do this one more time uh, when Gladio renews his blink buff later in the fight having 2 additional turns of blink may not seem like a lot but for people who use Gladio quite a lot I can tell you um, extending his blink buff uh, goes a very long way and at later stages of the Lufania fight can equate to a few more additional turns of counter which is quite sizable in terms of damage and additional turns of protection from bosses attacks okay so we are slowly getting into more and more not so obvious call utilities and the third one that I want to feature is one that I've actually used quite a lot uh, even though it only has a regular call at this stage of the game and no LD call ability yet and that is actually rude now if you notice here I have Seador in play and he doesn't have any active buffs currently and I also have a Leviathan summon in play 
And watch what happens when I use root. Okay, if you've noticed, for some reason, my Seador now has one active buff. And that buff is actually Leviathan's Blessing. Now, if for those who are aware, if you read the description on the Leviathan summon, you get this blessing whenever any of your party members drop to 80% HP or below. Uh, which many people would just assume you need to take some HP damage to trigger the blessing. However, with Root Call, you can actually get around this. And just quick explanation of what happens here. So first of all, uh, Root Call in the description, it looks like a basic attack and he heals the party. But again, what the game doesn't tell you is that whenever a character comes into play, you get effects of whatever ability they have uh, that takes effect at the start of battle. For Root, he does have one very interesting effect in the sense that he actually increases the max HP of your entire party. So if you look at Seador's HP now, you'll notice that it's now 22,000 HP and the numbers are in red. And that's because Root has increased the max HP of Seador. But how does this actually trigger the blessing from Leviathan? So what happens is that when Root comes into play as a call ability, he will first extend every party member's max HP. And for a very brief moment in time, their current HP is actually 80% or less than their new maximum HP, which will immediately trigger Leviathan's Blessing. And right after that, Root will actually heal everyone to the new maximum HP ceiling. And that's why if you, you do not look at the HP numbers, you may not actually notice this effect. The one thing though that for this to actually work, you need at least two copies of Root's C50 artifact passive. Otherwise, uh, anything less than that will not trigger the blessing because the new maximum HP will not be high enough. Beyond Leviathan, this works also on other summons which carries the trigger of having 80% or lower HP. And this includes Odin as well as uh, Alexander for the healing, uh, which I, I don't know why you need it, but it, it will work. And very interestingly, Diabolos as well. And it can be very useful in fights where, for example, you want to cheese the fight and not allow the boss to take any turns, but you also want to get the full uh, blessing effect of the summon abilities especially a powerful summon such as Diabolos. Imagining everyone getting the, the juicy 50% boost to brave attack, uh, I think it's very well worth the uh, call slot for Root. Okay, the fourth not so obvious call ability that I want to feature here is actually going to be Mock. Now Mock may seem like a very straightforward call ability you have Jump, which does a nice, um, decent damage at least. And you have Mughal March, which is a very strong uh, group party healing. I think it's around 70% HP healing, uh, followed by some nice HP damage. But I include Mog here because uh, Mog does have a lot of utility in his call ability. So just by looking at his um, overall call ability list here, you have one that does damage and one that does uh, massive healing to the party but it also goes beyond that uh, and that because that's because Mok has his uh, follow-up attacks now for those who aren't aware anytime Mok does any attacks and this will also include both his call abilities he always does a certain follow-up attack and this is one of two follow-up attacks depending on whether your party is debuffed or not so if no one in your party has any debuffs, Mok will do a full up attack called uh, Plasma Plus, which has a 30% chance to confuse the enemies. Um, and this means that if since you have two call abilities here with Mok, you have two call abilities that can potentially have a 30% chance to inflict confuse. Beyond that also, if your party members have any debuffs on them, Using Mock as a call ability will do El Nino uh, follow up attack, which cleanses two debuffs per party member. 
and this I think provides quite a lot of utility if you consider fights where there's very nasty debuffs I think most commonly is the Dullahan fight very re recently where he can inflict a 30% HP poison effect or debuff on your party you can actually cleanse this immediately with either of Mog's abilities yes it's true that you only get two users of cleansers but you know, look back at some Lufania fights where there's very nasty debuffs having Mog as a call ability can actually cleanse these nasty debuffs away I think one other good example would be in Seador's Lufania against the Centipedes where they can also inflict very nasty uh, HP poison effect on your party so you can just cleanse that right off uh, with either Mog's abilities so all in all you know, Mog is a Swiss army knife of utility in a call ability he does damage, he does group party healing, he does have a small percentage chance to confuse, disable the, the enemies and he, he can also cleanse your entire party of debuffs which I think overall um, is a very nice package for a call ability. Okay, my fifth and final not so obvious call utility that I really want to feature here is none other than Selfie. So this may come as a surprise to many people um, why I include Selfie because she is definitely one of the lesser used call ability especially since that she doesn't have an LD call yet um, and her call ability really only inflicts wall which you know provides some nice uh, defenses as well as uh, debuff evasion which is not even at 100% debuff evasion but the key thing about Yuffie ability uh, especially uh, if you have her realized is that she also comes into play uh, giving the entire party the aura buff so I'll just um, do it here to show you what I mean so she does wall, everyone gets battery, everyone gets wall but if you look at my squall he also has an ability, uh, a buff called aura now aura comes into play with just 3 turns so by itself it may not seem like much you know, all your party members will get a faster charging EX for only 3 turns. Doesn't seem like much, but you have to also take into consideration that there are characters such as Squall who can actually extend buffs on themselves. And this can potentially be huge. So, let me show you what I mean. So, again, at this point in time, Squall has 3 turns of aura buff and his EX is ready, watch what happens when I use his Assault Trigger. Okay, so if you look at Squall, his wall buff is now oh not a ball his aura sorry buff is now at four turns rather than three so what happens is that when squall uses his ex it extends all buffs by himself for an additional two turns uh, one of which will then deplete down after he does his ex because he has taken a turn um, and this means that you can actually indefinitely keep up um, Aura with Squall because Aura also helps him to speed up his uh, EX much more quickly as well and with Squall you can actually get to his EX every two turns so I'll show you what I mean here so so I'm just waiting for Squall to get his turn So you can see here that his EX meter is already halfway through uh, right after he used his EX. So I'll just use his LD here. And let's make use of his buff extension even more. I'll just use a Vidya call. 
And video call, if you read the in-game description, it gives everyone 4 turns of water and chant. Which again may not seem like much since it's only 4 turns. But again, you have a squall now who can extend buffs. So I'm just getting to squall's second turn after his EX. And surprise surprise, his EX is already fully charged and his aura buff is back at 3 turns. So what this means is that if I use his EX again, it will be extended to 5 turns once more. And you can keep cycling through uh, Solid Barrel and LD into his EX and he can use his EX once every 2 turns. Not only is this a significant DPS increase on single target bosses like Gulahan, this means that Squall can also permanently upkeep the aura buff on himself and he can also permanently upkeep other buffs on himself as well in this case the water enchant buff that the video call has granted there are currently in this point of the game two call abilities that can grant a, an elemental enchant one being video call for water enchant and the other being lulu call for fire enchant so you can effectively turn squall into a permanent water enchanted attacker or fire enchanted attacker for the entire fight so long as you can upkeep aura at the enchant uh, buff through his EX. The only one thing to take note for Squall is that you can't use Renzo Kuken because Renzo Kuken has too low a turn rate or too high a turn rate I should say um, and that won't actually allow him to charge his assault trigger once every two turns. So you need to alternate between either his solid barrel or his LB to enable him to get to EX once every two uh, turns. Besides Squall, there are also other characters who have this same feature of buff extension on their EX abilities. The other most notable one being Firion, who can also extend all buffs for two turns on his EX use. And it's a significant DPS increase for him because it allows him to use his 100% splash damage EX once every two turns. And another good example is actually Krish, who is a little bit outdated at this stage of the game, but she is notable because her EX extends all the buffs on herself by a whopping 5 turns, which gives her a lot more wiggle room to upkeep aura as well as any other buffs. Uh, that a call ability can grant. So that's it for this video. I hope that this video has been somewhat informative and helpful. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next Lufania fight. Bye bye.